everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to build a custom select drop down using react and tailwind css we'll walk through every step setting up the project styling the drop down and adding interactive features by the end you'll have a fully functional and reusable drop down component that you can use in your own projects so let's jump right into it now let's set up our react project with tailwind css first let's create a new Vite project Open your terminal and run the following command to initialize a new Vite app. npm create Vite at latest. You'll be prompted to choose a project name and a framework. Choose React and JavaScript for a simple setup. Once your Vite project is created, navigate into the project directory by running the following command. cd Vite project. Now install the necessary dependencies by running npm install. To see your project in action, start the development server by running npm run dev. This will start the Vite development server and open your project in the browser. Once the installation is done, let's open up the project and clean up a few things. First, open the app.jsx file. You'll see some boilerplate code. Go ahead and remove everything inside the app component. We'll start fresh and build it out step by step. Next, open the index.css file and remove all the default styles. We'll add the Tailwind directives in a bit. Finally, open the app.css file and clear everything out as we won't need it for now. With these files cleaned up, we have a blank canvas to work with. Before we start setting up Tailwind CSS, let's quickly go to our browser and search for Tailwind CSS Vite Setup. You'll find the official Tailwind documentation with all the installation steps you need. It's always good practice to refer to the docs for the latest updates. Now that the project is ready, let's bring in Tailwind CSS. To install Tailwind along with Post CSS and Auto Prefixer, run the following command. After Tailwind is installed, we need to generate the configuration files. Run the following command px tailwind css init p. This will set up the necessary configuration files for you to customize Tailwind as needed. Now we need to tell Tailwind where to look for your React files. Open the tailwind.config.js file and add the following content to the content array so Tailwind can purge unused styles in production. Next, let's set up Tailwind's directives. Open the index.css file and add the following lines to include Tailwind's base, components, and utilities layers. This will inject Tailwind's default styles into your project. All right, now let's dive into the actual tutorial and start creating our custom select dropdown. First, we'll organize our project a bit. Head over to the SRC folder and inside it, create a new folder named components. This is where we'll store all our reusable components for this project. Next, inside the components folder, let's create a new file called select dropdown.jsx. This file will house our dropdown component and we'll design it in a way that makes it fully reusable across different parts of the application. With our project structure ready, we're all set to start building the select dropdown component. Let's move on to writing some code. Let's start by bringing our select dropdown component into the app.jsx file and adding some styles to make it look sharp. Now, let's head to the select dropdown component itself and refine its design. We'll add a few more Tailwind classes to improve its layout and styling. We'll start by adding a border, padding, and rounded corners to the dropdown to give it a clean, modern appearance. We can also tweak the colors, choosing neutral tones for the background and text, which will keep it sleek and subtle.
For icons in this project, we'll be using the popular React Icons library. It's super easy to use and has a wide variety of icons available. First, let's go to your browser and search for React Icons. Open the first link, which will take you to the official React Icons documentation. From here, you can search for the specific icon you need. In my case, I'll be using the down arrow fill icon. Once you find the icon, click on it and you'll see an import statement. Copy that import statement and paste it into your code. Finally, to start using React icons in your project, you need to install the library. Run the following command in your terminal. npm install React icons and that's it. Now we're ready to use icons in our select dropdown component. Let's move forward. All right, now let's move to the app.jsx file and pass some options to our select dropdown component. To make this component dynamic and reusable, we'll create an array of options that we want to display in the dropdown. In my case, I'm creating an array of months called months, which includes all 12 months of the year. Here's how it looks. Once we have our array ready, we'll pass it as a prop to the select dropdown component like this. And that's it. The dropdown component is now flexible. You can pass any array of options you want, whether it's a list of months, days, categories, or anything else. Next, let's create the dropdown content itself, which will be conditionally rendered based on whether the dropdown is visible or not. Inside the dropdown, we'll map through the options array that we passed into the select dropdown component. This will allow us to display each option dynamically in the dropdown list. To make the dropdown look great, let's use some Tailwind CSS. We'll add a background color, padding, rounded corners, and a subtle shadow effect to give it a clean and modern look. On top of that, we'll implement hover effects for each option, so when you hover over an item, it'll change color, giving it an interactive feel. Now let's talk about the is dropdown visible state. This state will control whether the dropdown is visible or not. We'll initialize it with false, meaning the dropdown is hidden by default. Next, let's render the dropdown content based on the visibility state. We'll use the logical and and operator in JSX to conditionally render the dropdown. With the and and operator, we check if is dropdown visible is true. If it is, the dropdown content will be displayed. Otherwise, it will remain hidden. This is a clean and concise way to conditionally render elements in React. Then we'll create an onclick event on the dropdown toggle, the button, which will update the is dropdown visible state. This will open the dropdown when clicked and close it again if clicked while already open. With this, we've got a fully styled dropdown menu that feels responsive and interactive. Now we're ready to take it a step further and make sure the dropdown closes when clicking outside. 
Next, let's make sure the drop-down closes when clicking outside of it. To achieve this, we'll use the click-away listener from Material UI. First, let's head over to the browser and search for MUI click-away listener. Click on the first link to open the official documentation. Now, we need to install the at MUI slash base package in our project. This will give us access to the click-away listener component. So, open up your terminal and run the following command to install it. Once the installation is done, let's go back to the code. We need to import clickaway listener from at MUI slash base into our file. Simply copy the import from the docs and paste it into your code. Now, to use clickaway listener, we'll wrap our drop down part with it. This will allow us to detect if a click happens outside of the drop down. We also need to define an on click away event handler. Let's create a function called handle click away which will close the dropdown whenever a click occurs outside the dropdown area. And that's it. Now, whenever you click outside the dropdown, it will automatically close. This adds a smooth, intuitive user experience to your dropdown. Now, let's move on to handling the selection of a value from the dropdown. To keep track of the selected value, we'll create a state called selected month. This will store the month that the user selects from the dropdown. We'll initialize the selected month state with a default value such as January, but feel free to choose any initial value that makes sense for your use case. Next, let's render this selected value inside the drop-down button. We'll replace the placeholder text with the selected month state so that whatever month is selected will be displayed in the button. Now we need to add an on-click event to each of the options in the drop-down. When a user clicks on an option, we'll update the selected month state with the clicked value. With this in place, when a user clicks on any option from the drop-down, that value will be saved to the selected month state and you'll see the updated value in the drop-down button instantly. The UI is now interactive and responsive to user input. Next, let's improve the user experience by closing the drop-down once the user selects a value. Currently, the drop-down stays open even after a selection is made, but we want it to automatically close when the user picks a value. To do this, we'll use the set is drop-down visible state. Inside the onClick event for each option in the dropdown content, after updating the selected month state, we'll also set set as dropdown visible false. This will close the dropdown immediately after a selection is made. This is a great way to make the dropdown more intuitive and less cluttered. Users won't need to manually click to close the dropdown, it's all handled automatically. With this simple update, we've made the dropdown even more interactive and seamless. Now, when a user selects an option, the dropdown will instantly close, making the experience feel much more fluid. Now, let's add some interactivity to the dropdown icon to make it feel more dynamic and responsive. When the dropdown is open, we want the icon to rotate 180 degrees, giving users a visual cue that the menu is active. And when the dropdown is closed, we want the icon to return to its original position. We can achieve this easily with Tailwind's built-in transition and rotate classes. Inside the Fakare down icon, we'll conditionally apply the rotate-180 class when the dropdown is visible. By using the transition all class from Tailwind, we can smoothly animate the icon rotation so it doesn't just snap into place but rotates fluidly. This subtle animation adds a polished, interactive touch to the UI. With this effect in place, users will have a more engaging and visually intuitive experience. The rotation not only helps indicate the drop-down state, but also enhances the overall feel of the interface. So now, the icon will rotate smoothly when the drop-down opens and return to its original position when closed, making the drop-down interaction more engaging and visually satisfying. One final touch we need to add is the toggling functionality for the drop-down visibility. 
Currently, we're directly setting the drop-down visibility to true or false, but to make the drop-down open and close smoothly when clicked, we'll need to toggle its state. Instead of setting set is drop-down visible true, we'll update it to set is drop-down visible, not is drop-down visible. This uses the current value of is drop-down visible and inverts it. If it's true, it will become false, and if it's false, it will become true. This toggle functionality is key to making the drop-down more interactive and intuitive. It allows the user to open and close the drop-down seamlessly with each click, creating a fluid, dynamic experience. By adding this toggle, we've made the drop-down more user-friendly and responsive. Now, when the user clicks the drop-down, it will open or close depending on its current state, without needing any additional logic. To wrap up, building a custom drop-down gives you better performance by reducing bloat, more control over styling, and easier maintenance without worrying about third-party updates. While libraries like MUI or Ant Design are great for quick solutions, creating your own component keeps things lightweight and customizable. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more tutorials.